moving on to public works is a presentation by Mr. Broom. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I'm uh, Tom Brune with the Department of Public Works. Approximately 18 months ago, uh, Assistant Chief Kevin Hugard and I were before you to talk about issues and concerns with the existing animal shelter, which, as you're well aware, um, is inadequate to serve the needs of the animals that are housed there, the staff that work there, and the, uh, the residents that visit. At that time, uh, you approved some funding to uh, fix some immediate concerns, more specifically the HVAC and air handling system. Uh, that work has been completed um, and now meets uh, the Association of Veter Veterinarian um, um, of uh, shelter veterinarian standards. Uh, that work was completed uh, this past winter. In June of 2016, you approved a million dollars uh, for us to begin a schematic design process. Um, we have gone through that process now, and we're back here to present you with some options uh, for design. That was what you directed us to do back in June of 2016. We've looked at a number of design, at design options. Uh, we're going to present four of those uh, for you today. Um, once a, an, an option has been selected for us to go through detailed design, uh, we expect that the detailed design will take a, about nine months to complete for, uh, from the time that you give us the go-ahead. Um, plan review, permitting, bid advertisement, and bid award would be another uh, eight months uh, process. And then construction would be anywhere between 18 and 24 months, depending on the option that you select. Uh, we've worked uh, with a design team that has uh, very significant experience in the design of animal shelters. They've worked on projects uh, throughout this country. And at this point, I would like to turn it over to the project manager uh, of the design team, Michael Totomo. He's with the uh, the firm of Cole and Denny Architects, and he's going to present the work that has been done so far, as well as the options uh, for your consideration. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Mr. Kutomo. Thank you, Tom. I'm Mike Dutomo. I'm one of the partners, principals of Cole and Denny Architects. I'm here with my partner, John Cole. And as you can see here, uh, we've got a number of county and municipal um, project experience. We are an award-winning design team, and we are the team that brought uh, the design of Fairfax County, uh, County Animal Shelter um, forward several years ago. We've retained, and she's not here with us today, unfortunately, but she is available uh, in September, Martha Seng. She is our animal consulting expert. She is an architect. She has worked on over 100 animal shelters. She has 39 years of experience, and she has been elevated to a fellow uh, for the American Institute of Architects for her work in animal shelter, animal shelter design. Um, she has led the programming design initiative along with us to bring you these options. So following the strategic plan, I really want to illustrate that mm -hmm. the project outcome here is to support the notion that Princeton County is a community of choice. For, by providing an improved adoption opportunities to address public concern for animal welfare. And we're going to do that three, by following three sort of set of standards and guidelines. We're going to meet the state requirements that the Department of Agriculture and Consumer um, Services has. That is really the state vet. The state vet visits the shelter periodically, provides a, an inspection report, and that's really where the, the state regulations are. We're going to address the facility shortfalls from the Prince William County internal audit. Um, you're all familiar with the audit um, and the shortcomings that the current animal shelter has. And we're going to meet the standards of the Association of Shelter Veterinarians. You've heard that standard referenced earlier today through your citizens. And these designs are going to address those national standards for animal shelters. So the current shelter has 85,000 visitors a year, 4,100 animals per year. It's built in the 70s, it was renovated in the 90s. It's made up of this 
sort of cross-shaped building right here. It's approximately 6,000 square feet. There are two modular buildings. These are sort of portable buildings, one for the ACOs, one for staff, and then about 12 outbuildings across a 12-acre site located at the corner of 234 and Bristow Road. Um, altogether, this is about 13,000 square feet of program space. The current facility has adoption, has quarantine, has visitation of animals, the animal control officers are there, there is a vet office, and there's a public dog park. All of these services are substandard as illustrated in the internal audit. Just to look at a, the site more closely, here's the shelter. This is the site. This is the Kelly Education Center. This is the administrative headquarters for Prince William County Schools. This is the landfill. Here's 234 Dumfries Road coming down and Bristow Road coming around. So really we have this site to focus on for redevelopment. And here's the shelter and again the intersection right there. Go ahead to the next one. Thanks, Tom. The four options we're presenting are after we looked at a number of options. And I think these really represent our recommendations forward. Um, option A and B are really uh, uh, animal shelter designs that meet your budget. Animal shelter C and D are designs that meet the service requirements that are needed to deliver a successful animal shelter, shelter for Prince William County. We're going to kind of go through these, but in short, A is new construction. We're going to maintain a number of existing outbuildings. B is an interior renovation right here to the existing facility and a new adoption facility. C is an all-new facility that meets all the service requirements. And D is a renovation of the existing facility with a large addition and then two satellite remote adoption facilities to sort of spread adoption across the county. Looking at the site plan one more time, this is a, a option C, but in general, here's the existing building in gray. The new building would be closer to the intersection to really promote visibility and retail um, success with the way the shelter is facing the road. In other words, you have traffic passing by here, you have traffic passing by here. This is tucked far away from the entrance. By bringing the shelter closer to the intersection, we have visibility in the outdoor dog training yards, the outdoor dog exercise yards, um, and through the adoption wing, which is closest to that intersection. Coming in, you would enter a visitor parking lot, immediately enter a large welcoming lobby, and we can walk through the rest of the adoption space. But really, it's about getting the shelter closer to that intersection to really prove the success of adoption, to really change the outlook of the shelter and bring it into the community. Go ahead, Tom. Look at option A. This is new construction. This is about 18,000 square feet. Overall, to deliver the services that Prince William County needs for the animal shelter, we need about 28,000 square feet. So where this scheme has successes is it's a brand new adoption facility. We have adoption dog kennels, adoption dog kennels. You're entering a large welcoming adoption lobby. You have fresh air. You have lots of natural daylight um, to help with the animal's circadian rhythm. Their, their health and safety. You have staff spaces. Um, you have separate visitor parking and then staff parking will be around back. Since this has, is a little short on the 28,000 square feet, what we're going to do is utilize a number of the existing outbuildings. Um, this provides kenneling for 40 dogs and 90 cats. To meet the 20 year needs of Prince William County, we need to be able to kennel about 106 cats and 56 dogs. So again, we're a little, a little short on space, but we're delivering a brand new adoption facility. And while utilizing the existing outbuildings, we can bring a building that meets the state requirements. It's going to mostly meet the internal audits. Again, we're using some of the existing facility buildings. And you noted a lot of those shortcomings in those buildings. And it's going to mostly meet the national standards. I say mostly meet because, again, we're not able to kennel all the animals. We're not able to provide all of the staff and service spaces that are required to meet Prince William County needs. This large space right here, this is to say, we can make this the, the vet suite that's needed. We can make this the ACO offices that is needed. We can make this the grooming area. In this scheme, we're going to have to take a closer look at what services are most important and need to be included, and what services perhaps are in some of the existing buildings or are left out in this initial scheme. Go ahead. So just in summary, again, it's 18,000 square feet. 90 cats, 40 dogs, 
It will have dedicated animal isolation and quarantine meeting the national standards. Um, some of the, the, the difficulties I talked about is limited vet, limited ACO offices, depending on how we program that in space. And it fully meets the state requirements and mostly meets the national standards and the audit concerns. Go ahead. Madam Vice Chair. Supervisor Anderson. I'm just wondering, should we ask questions while we're looking at each option? If I'm actually okay with that because um, unless, unless you would I'm okay to go, go have you like. We are going to present four options um, and we kind of ran through them in summary. So if you'd like to go at each that option. That will throw you off your presentation. Will not throw us off. All right, here we go. Supervisor Anderson. Does, um, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Um, does this option include tearing down the current main building? It does. Okay. Um, the existing 6,000 square foot main building would be torn down at the end of the new construction. In other words, you would build this, move all your staffing and animals over, and then tear down the old building. What happens to the new HVAC system that was just installed? It's a great question. I should have mentioned that the HVAC system that was just installed can be reused in this new building, and that is the plan for all four schemes. But that HVAC equipment will be relocated and reused. It has a 20-year lifespan, and we're one year in, so it's got 19 years of useful life left. And it is an energy recovery unit, which is excellent, excellent for health of the animals and for minimizing the energy used um, to provide that. Okay, final question on this option. And still with reusing that, and it's still 11.3 million, I think? That's correct. Okay. And that is project cost, not to be confused with construction cost. That is total project. I do have one more question. You say it mostly meets the internal audit report? Correct. Oh, what doesn't it meet? We are going to continue to utilize some of the existing outbuildings. And if you note the, the existing facility, notice that files are stored in some of the outbuildings. We're going to be short on some storage space here. Those files may continue to be stored in those outbuildings. So just the fact that we're utilizing those outbuildings is already sort of a continuing that culture that is noted in the audit. Okay. Thank um, you. You, you bring me to a, a question. I recall those outbuild. I've been to the shelter a handful of times, and I don't remember any of those outbuildings being suitable for um, long-term use. They're, I always thought they were already quite outdated. And you weren't here, so this isn't relevant to you, but I recall a conversation about during the audit report about moving records to our record warehouse. Mr. Martino, is that something that staff is already working on so that the point that this gentleman made is irrelevant? Besides records, there's a number of other storage things. Uh, Food storage, et cetera. Uh, I just okay. use that as an example. But you're right. Your, your audit does recommend that, that records move electronically ultimately and then all records be centralized in one location. Okay. So you're by, referring to storage. Um, storage in general. By retaining the existing outbuildings and using them, we're, we're continuing that culture of where the shelter is today rather than looking at what we're talking about here, a brand new shelter right. that can uh, address yeah. all the county needs. Yeah, I, I, well, for my one eighth, I, I don't think that those um, outdoor facilities or additional facilities are adequate. So that the next three schemes partially address that. Yeah, um, Madam Vice Chair, Mr. Chairman, if I can interject, so some of those outbuildings are where the animal control officers Correct. Uh, lockers are also. That's correct. And some office space. Correct. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Kellen. Uh, just make sure my, my numbers are, are correct. So you're, you're saying that the A, at least with A, and maybe the, the situation with um, the other ones moving forward, but 130 animals could be serviced at one time or housed at one time. Correct. You said 40 dogs, 90 cats. Correct. What's the, what's the current? Do we know what the current? So the animal, current animals... The, the number of animals doesn't change. What changes is, right here, and go back one if you don't mind, Tom. Um, this is a perfect example. This is a, a eight dog dog kennel run. Eight dogs will be housed in here. Each dog will get a double-sided kennel. Each kennel is six feet by four foot on one side and six foot by four foot on the other side. So that's almost 50 square feet for one dog. You currently are housing three, four, and five dogs in a single-sided kennel. That's a dramatic difference in space needs, and that is to meet the national standards,
That's also addressed in the audit. And so really, eight dogs here versus currently you're keeping something like 32 dogs here. Um, so that, that's the major space growth. Um, go forward one more, Tom. The red is illustrating all animal care space. Gray would be staff space, and red is animal care space. So the entire building is devoted to animal care, animal housing. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Mr. Callan. I'm, I'm sorry. So what's the answer? How much are we... You're, you're housing today? the same number of animals. Okay, same, same number of animals. But as you pointed out, you give animals more room to... Animals okay. more room. And okay. the, the exact calculation is based on a 20-year growth. Okay. Not to Thank say you. it's going to grow dramatically. It should remain the same because you're doing an excellent job adopting even as the community grows and the community changes. There's a complicated cal calculation with length of stay, number of animals. The good thing is there are significant records that the shelter keeps able to base those calculations on. Okay. For the questions, or, or keep on going, please. Yeah. On to option B. So option B is very similar. We're going to make a 17,000 square foot new adoption facility here. And then here's your existing building. We're going to renovate this part. And it's only going to be an interior renovation. In other words, interior walls, ceiling, floors. We're not going to do anything to the exterior skin of the building. No new windows, no new doors, no new roof, no insulation, but an interior renovation right here. And what this gives us is a brand new adoption facility with all those wonderful adoption amenities of you can see animals right when you pull in. You can see animals from the street. You can see animals from the adoption lobby. You're excited. You can meet the animals. You can see the small uh, animals in the puppy meat room. And you have a, a, a cat playroom right off the lobby. You have small animals uh, for birds and reptiles, etc. You have all those wonderful adoption amenities and, and focus on increased adoption in this building. And then here you kind of turn it into a vet and ACO uh, building. The ACOs would have this little corner right here for their office work and administrative work. And this part right here would be a vet suite. This would be a full vet suite offering surgery. You currently don't offer surgery. You have sort of a, a vet um, inspection, you know, they can do an initial evaluation and if anything really needs to happen, it, it goes off site. This vet would not be for the public, this vet is for the animals that are at the shelter. These are your two existing dog kennels. So you can see you have two here and we're proposing one, two, three, four, five more in addition to those two. That's that increase in numbers I was just talking about as far as giving them the appropriate space. Um, this would become your quarantine and isolation. So this becomes a, a very a private, um, health rehabilitation, an ACO suite uh, or building, and this becomes your adoption building. Reutilizing re the Sally Port and still continuing to reutilize this uh, portable building which houses um, a bathroom, a laundry room, and so forth. The reason we're keeping this building is this is two separate buildings. This requires a, a little bit of um, staff challenges taking animals back and forth should they need to come back. If somebody drops an animal off here, they now have to bring it over here. Or should you have dirty laundry here, they can do the laundry here, but should they have dirty laundry here, they can do it in this building. So there's a, there's a little bit of redundancy because we have two separate buildings here and some staff challenges. But in, all, in total, this gives you 17,000 square feet plus 6,000 square feet plus about another 1,000 square feet. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Cadigan. Um, you had mentioned A. The life of that one would be 20 years. 20 years. What is the life of this one? So that's to address the county shelter needs for 20 years. The life of the building would be more like 50 years. The life of the new building should be expected to be 50 years. 20 years is when maintenance would sort of kick in. You're replacing sealants, you're looking at roof replacements, that sort of thing. But it should be the life expectancy of the building is 50 years. In this scheme, since we're only providing an interior renovation on this portion, you'd really have to start looking at a major renovation of this building in about 5 to 10 years. It's already, again, from the 70s, it's been renovated in the 90s. That was 20 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. So looking at a roof replacement, a window replacement, et cetera, it's something to consider uh, shortly. Mm -hmm. And what are the, I'm sorry, Mr. Noah, you were next. Just make sure we're clear. The, this building here, in option B, this building here is the same as the new building in option A. Very much so, yes. Basically the same building either. So the, ba the major difference in A and B is, under option A, we get this building and then we retain the other outbuildings tearing the existing main building down. Correct. Under this one, we get basically the same, very probably essentially the same new building. We get rid of the outbuildings, except for this one. Right. 
but we keep the old shelter Correct. for certain services. You're going to put about $700,000 into this interior renovation, which is not that much if you think about the cost of buildings. Uh, that's construction costs. And that's, again, only an interior renovation. Interior walls, flooring, okay. ceiling. We're going to keep those HVAC units like we talked about. And so you're, you're getting this building and you're getting new space, but this is, again, only mostly needing the audit. Um, it does much better at addressing the national guidelines, the ASV guidelines, but the audit, we're going to continue to use these dog spaces. Yes, they're going to be less crowded, but they have an aging plumbing system. They have aging gates. Mm -hmm. They have aging windows and daylight. So it's still continuing that service of culture in this building, even though we've got this light interior renovation right here. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, on the old building, the, the old stalls for the for the, uh, for the for the animals there. What what would be the difference in use between those ones and the new ones? Correct. So, the state requirements as well as the national standards require separate isolation and quarantine. These are animals that uh, either need evaluation, need separate holding, or are sick. So you know, this way you have completely separate buildings. Completely separate so buildings. So this would be your isolation and quarantine. And if you if you look closely, there's an outdoor a fenced area so that you would not have to pass through one to get to the other. Um, otherwise, what's the point of taking a sick dog through a healthy zone to get to the sick housing? Okay. So now, if you go back to uh, option A, correct, which is which yeah. is cheaper. Right. You see here we have this unprogrammed one... space. We're going to get this unprogrammed space, which isn't shown in B. And to your question, I think you're about to ask is which one is the quarantine and isolation? Yeah. We're talking about making this wing the adoption wing. So you could have adoption, adoption, and maybe a flex space for overrun. And then this typically is your holding. This is where we're short. Remember, we need a, uh, dogs. We need 56 dogs. This only adds up to 40. So we're missing 16 dogs. So we're going to have to make some tough decisions about, well, is this one isolation, this one quarantine, this one adoption, this one adoption, and we don't have space for um, some sort of incident that requires extra dogs? Or, you know, this is a little bit the unknown with this scheme is, is we're going to have to make some tough service de decisions because what we really need to meet the county's service requirements for animal care is 28,000 square feet, and this is only 18. Okay. I Mr. See. Chairman. Ms. Lawson. Did you incorporate our new off-site adoption center into your model? Option D. Gotcha. I'll right. wait. So keep on going. Option C is next. Um, I think we've covered all this. And, again, uh, it's going to meet the state requirements. It mostly meets the audit report, again, because we're keeping this old piece and we're not even renovating part of it. And then it fully meets the national standards now because we're providing all those separate uses. Mm -hmm. um, so option C, all new construction. We build an all new building, move the animals from the old building in here, tear down the old building, tear down all the outbuildings. Everything's gone. So this is all new. This provides everything. This is 28,000 square feet. We have... Again, the same adoption wing that we've been talking about throughout all the schemes here. It would have a, two separate entrances. This one's for adoption. This one would be for relinquish or lost and found or something that is not adoption. Often, if you place somebody who's relinquishing an animal uh, adjacent to somebody who's adopting an animal, there can be, it's, they're both very emotional situations and it can cause a little uh, difficulty with visitors. So, separate lobby for relinquishing animals. Those animals would come straight into holding. They could be evaluated, determine if they need to go to isolation, quarantine, if they need vet care. We have a full vet suite uh, here. We'd have the ACOs in, right here. We have a brand new sally port for careful and secure drop off. The animals could not escape um, when being handled and being offloaded and brought in for processing. We'd have a full processing area to make sure the animals are properly identified, documented, and a file open for them. Um, again, you see off the back here, and this is made to be visible from 234, exercise area so that you can see those dogs uh, directly going off their dog kennel runs and exercising. A larger dog training area and another one here pushed towards the corner uh, for perhaps a weekend training or a seminar of some sort. This would have a barn. It, it would maintain uh, secure staff parking separate from visitor parking. As well as you come off here, this would be dog park parking. So somebody who's coming to potentially adopt, they would come here. Somebody who's coming to potentially take their dog to the dog park would come here, and then it's off-site just here. And then if you're staff or if you're an ACO, you go through the high-speed gate 
and into the back. So this really organizes and makes an efficient layout of a new building. Um, you have a minimal core factor, very uh, um, efficient layout where everything comes off the central core. Staff space is right in the middle so they can move to either end of the building quickly to assist. A full locker room. Um, the old building is completely gone or has it been Completely gone. Everything on site has gone. Okay. Old, buildings, old buildings gone, outbuildings gone, mm -hmm. trailers gone. Okay. And so like I said, this meets all your service needs. 28,000 square feet, uh, it has the complete vet space, the ACO offices, dedicated animal isolation, multi-purpose room, uh, meets the, the, the quantity, which we've talked a little bit about, 106 double-sided cat kennels and 56 double-sided dog kennels. Um, it meets the 20-year planning needs for the facility, and it fully meets the state requirements, fully meets the audit, and fully meets the national standards for animal shelter. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Ms. Anderson. How have we decided that we need 106 double-sided cat kennels? So there's pretty good records kept of the number of animals in, the number of animals that are adopted, is sort of what happens to each animal that comes into the facility. There's also excellent records kept of how long they stay. Um, so there's a careful uh, formula of length of stay times the number of animals, uh, cross-compared against your population change, and really what it comes out to is you have approximately a, a, a 12 to 20 day length of stay, which is not, it's, it's pretty good. And we're looking at dropping it, I think, concurrently from 22 to below 20 um, with the new shelter. But that times those number of animals is where you end up with needing 56 double-sided dog housing units. Okay. And that would cover all situations for the next just, 20 years. Just one follow-on question. What the, I know you were involved with the Fairfax shelter. Correct. What, How many so, cat kennels do they have? And dog kennels? They have close to um, 90 cat uh, and they have 66 dog so slightly more dogs slightly less cats and again it's based on their county requirements. Um, the dramatic change there is when Fairfax County finally implemented the full renovation they immediately were uh, saw their adoption rate jump to above 90 percent. I think you heard a citizen mention it's at mm -hmm. 72 or 78 percent earlier. To jump up to 90 percent uh, mm -hmm was with such excellence it requires staff you know really managing and documenting and promoting adoption but it also it, it's a new facility it's no longer the dog pound from the 1960s it's the adoption facility that the community wants to belong to and participate with and support it attracts volunteers brings people in it's welcoming and that's what we're trying to do here as well all right so uh all of these options assume no change in county policy with regard to feral cats, is that right? This is not about policy, correct. Right, okay. So, I mean, the, the, the difference is in Fairfax, they don't accept, from what I understand, or maybe you're not the right person to I've accept. I've read the audit, and, I, and that is yeah. my understanding from the audit as well. They don't accept feral cats. We do. And they, instead, Fairfax works together with outside organizations. Correct. And every county does it a little bit different, and every yeah. county has a little bit different support groups that help out with whether it's large rural animals, uh, farm animals, or if it's cats, or if it's reptiles, because ultimately there's, there, every animal needs a little different need. And yes, we provided a barn in the scheme to help address maybe some of the chickens or pigs that come in, but you know, large horses already don't spend a lot of time at Princeton County. There are already you know, other resources that, that the county contacts to help take care of these animals. And that kind of relationship is important. A new shelter helps build those relationships and maintains them. Excellent. Thank you. Option D, um, to your concern, this is the, uh, we're calling them remote or off-site or leased space adoption facilities. So these are satellite facilities, approximately 3,000 square feet each, that could be placed at in, in the strip malls or other such spaces identified to be appropriate that could, could house an adoption set of animals. Um, let me walk through the whole shelter and I'll come right back to these. So in this scheme, we have a, a 6,000 square foot existing building that is fully renovated. New roof, new windows, new walls, new interior, new dog kennels, etc. And then we have a, a 20,000 square foot addition to it. 
Again, same focus on this adoption wing right here. You can see it's slightly truncated, and that's because some of this adoption is moving to these satellite campuses. Um, you have all 106 cats and all 56 dogs accounted for in here. You have a full vet suite. You have the full ACO uh, suite. You have all the appropriate staff spaces. Where this differs is, again, you've got these satellite campuses. So these satellite campuses are 3,000 square feet each. There's a, a careful study that our animal expert guided through her expertise, which is proven success in adoption means you have to have a minimum number that draws people there. So in this case, eight dogs and 10 cats is sort of the minimum number of dogs and cats you would need to draw visitors to potentially look at adopting these animals. So we've placed eight dogs in this one and 10 cats in this one, and then eight and 10 here, and left eight and 10 here in the central campus. So each one has the minimum number. Fairfax County, I mean, sorry, Prince William County does not have that many adoptable animals. Um, if you look at the previous schemes, we did not have four adoption uh, dog kennels, we had three. So this scheme, in a way, stretches the amount of adoptable animals across three facilities. Sure, we could only have one remote facility. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a matter of how do you want to move this, this scheme forward if this is an option you're looking at. Another concern is you've pot potentially um, created triplicate staffing. You have to staff all three facilities. That could be a real staffing challenge. Mm -hmm. That could be a transportation challenge should you need to move animals between. Another concern that was raised is if one of these satellite campuses is closed, those animals have to come back to the main campus. Mm -hmm. The main campus wasn't designed to house those animals. So now we may have created a situation where we can't place those animals back on the main campus. Um, all things to consider when looking at the scheme. And it does fully meet all the guidelines. It does fully meet the state requirements. It does address all the audit uh, concerns. And it, it tries to address the, the questions that I think were raised during programming initially of how do we do something if we wanted to create a satellite adoption facility? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Noe? Yeah, uh, the point that was just made is, is one that has worried me. When I, when I first read the report, I'm glad you gave the explanation you gave about the concept of what if you have to close one of these, um, Mr. Chairman, because what I, when I first, that, that level of detail isn't in the report that we got in our agenda. And you know, we have our current uh, satellite facility, and I like the model that we have where we have a community partner um, with whom we can contract to provide that satellite service. If at some point in time, this board or future board decides we don't need that satellite service, we can end that relationship with that community partner. If we need time we need more of it, we can expand that relationship with other community partners. The chat, what, I, what I'm very, I mean, you know, I, I, I drive by here literally every single day because it's, you know, it's in my district, it's right around the corner from my house. And what I worry about with sort of building a plan that assumes we will always have satellite facilities is, if someday the decision is we don't want satellite, some future board says we don't want satellite facilities any longer because of staffing or because of cost or you know, the rent we're paying you know, goes up or something, then at that point we have no place to take the animals back to. Um, you know, the, while I like the concept of adoption centers in terms of making adoptable animals available in other parts of the county, I'm very concerned about having that be the assumed policy because it's then in a policy that a future board of supervisors could reverse. Um, and then we'd have a problem because we would be back to exactly where we are right now, an insufficient facility. Correct. Okay. okay. Any, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Cowdy. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up. I was heading toward what you were saying. If we voted for option D um, and we had the off-site <coughs> facility, as Supervisor Noe said, we have a, a very successful one. And I would assume that that was going to stay no matter what we do with a new facility. <clears throat> would we be building the facilities or would we be doing like we're doing right now with, uh, with your facility? I think that would be a decision that you as the board would, would, would that be make. More, this would is proposing, and the budget numbers here are proposing that the county is paying for this lease space and this build out. So that's the 16 million? Correct. Okay. Um, all right, that was, that, was, that was my concern. We do have a successful one. We put one on the east, one on the west. I think we talked about that. Um, and that's what brings it up to 1602. It, it may be worth mentioning um, that your partnership currently um, mm -hmm. 
these facilities would have to be built to the same requirements we've been talking about, your audit requirements, mm -hmm. the state vet requirements, and the national standards. That's a different set of standards than maybe a, a, a private partner would have to adhere to. I'm not saying it's not equally good, it's just different. Okay. And that obviously could have a cost implication. So that it could be more than 1602 if we went with D. I know I'm not saying it should could be more. I'm potentially saying if you were to partner and it wasn't the county's responsibility to manage or build mm -hmm. or lease these spaces, then this would be less. Okay. Mr. Okay. Chairman. Ms. Lawson. Uh, option C. Yeah. Did I believe you touched on the uh, staff square footage? Well, I'm Correct. trying to. Is it in the middle? Uh, you go one more, Tom. So, oh, the other direction. So the easiest way to look at it is this yeah. gray block yeah. is staff, this is staff, and then this is the ACO staff area. Okay, so those so, three gray blocks are staffing. Okay, so my concern or question is um, they don't appear to gain square footage in a new facility. Is that? The, the major component that is missing from A and B is this. And what this is is this is a full locker room. Okay. I, you know, like, do they have a break room? Because right now I know that they operate under very tight parameters, and I facility. know they like go outside to the facility in the back and this, have this lunch right, where they also do laundry. And the, yeah, this room right here. So if this was that gray corner, this larger room is proposed to be a staff break room slash okay. uh, meeting room if they need to have a little conference. So yes, there's a break room right there. And then within the ACO uh, suite here, there'd be another conference, uh, small conference table area for them to meet. And then- Work it, desk, whatnot. Wor right, so currently we're proposing uh, a couple of offices and a couple of workstations depending on the staff member. Same with the ACOs, you have a, 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 an office, um, a storage locker for evidence, and then a number of open office spaces for the ACO staff. Mr. Chairman. Hello, Mr. Chairman. I've got a couple questions here. First of all, thank you very much for the, the presentation. I've heard you use some phrases like national guidelines, state requirements, county requirements, audit uh, requests, or I can't remember what the, the second word is. Is there a way to get some sort of list for us to understand sure. why certain things, because obviously not everything is a county requirement, not everything is a national guideline, not everything... You're, you're doing this over here because of a national guideline. You're doing this over here because you read something in an audit. It would be, it would be helpful for me in preparing for our, our meeting coming up to understand some of those requirements or guidelines that you use to create these, uh, these proposals. Sure. Uh, I think the easiest way would be to, to send that information forward, but in a, in a brief, the state vet requirements, um, which is what the... Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services uh, issues is a, uh, a regular inspection where they uh, ask questions like, are the animals healthy and safe? Um, is there appropriate amount, uh, is euthanasia being taken care of in an appropriate way? Is there separate isolation and quarantine? In other words, disease isn't able to spread. Mr. Chairman, Those, if, if, yeah. are there certain measurements and guidelines though? I mean, you, 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 just, asked, you just said very three very subjective uh, the, the state, requirements. The state is probably the most subjective. The national standards are probably the most uh, quantifiable. Okay. And then the audit kind of, if you've read it, merged all those things together along with county risk and culture and kind of pulled it all together into one. So all three of them overlap in ways, but the state vet is, is maybe the most subjective to the vet. The national guidelines are maybe the most descriptive, where you can actually take real measurements and do real exacting things. And then the audit, again, addresses sort of both along with county culture and county risk, county safety. Mr. Chairman, if I may follow up. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we see cost estimations here. Uh, where did those come from? And uh, okay. <laughs> No, that was my question. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, where did the cost estimates come from? And these are just cost estimates, obviously. And I guess turning to the, the county executive, we would take these designs and then put them out to, to bid, correct? Exactly. 
That's correct. Uh, this is uh, just the schematic design. Would, the whole design would need to be completed, and then we put out the bid, and we always evaluate the bids and, and, and do any value engineering we need to do. Okay, because I, I will tell you one of the, the and sorry to jump in before before you answer the question. One of the one of the concerns that that I've had is last year when we when we really first started talking about this, uh, we received a presentation where an estimate of $12.7 million mm -hmm. all in mm -hmm. for 37,000 square feet. Uh, and it comes out to be a, about a $343 per square feet uh, proposal. Now we're looking at 18,000 square feet at 12.3 million, <coughs> which is about $686 per square feet. And, and it's not, not a criticism of your proposals at all. My, my concern is, is that we're, we're seeing cost creep, we're seeing this go from, well, 12.7 a year ago, well, we'll never reach that number. Of course, we're going to be lower than 12.7. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you know, we, we had talked about, well, what if we did a $6 million animal shelter, an $8 million animal shelter? And now we're hearing 12.7 or 12.3 is barely going to get you anything that's functional. And uh, we might have to, you know, pull up some people's campers mm -hmm. and put animal, I mean, I'm exaggerating, obviously, but uh, my concern is we're just we're just the, the cost creep is just going up and up and up and up and I'd really like to understand kind of looping back to my original point what are those features that are requirements and what are those features that are um, built in nice to haves versus the must haves so. ultimately anything less than the programmed 27,000 or 28,000 square feet here is going to affect service in some way. Um, the requirements aside, it's going to affect Prince William County service of the animals in some way. Yeah. To the price, this is project cost. And when I say project cost, that's everything. That's not construction cost. Construction cost is not $14 million for this. Construction cost was not $12 million for that. <clears throat> I'm going to let county staff approach uh, when we get to these uh, um, cost breakdown slides. There's two here at the end that better explain them. Um, but just realize this is not construction cost. So the $600 a square foot, uh, that would be outrageous for construction cost. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. And I understand that. But also understand that the proposal that we got year, a year ago was all in number also. And that was uh, $343. So I understand those might be up. But the, but the fact is one's 100% higher than the other one, and, and, and I'll tell you, again, I'm not jumping on you guys because you're following the RFP. I'm just uh, concerned about the, the process in general. Um, I can't wait till the school board starts looking at some of these. <laughs> I, I looked at the average cost per student across the county, and it's $3,300 or $33,000 per student for an average school, whereas the, the least expensive option that we have up here is 87,000 per animal uh, in, in this facility. And so, it, it, I'm, and like I said, I'm worried about cost creep and, and, and where we're just seem to be going up and up. So, all right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Sanderson. And do the costs that you have listed there, do they include this design cost? They include design costs, yes. Okay. And I. We can jump ahead here in just a second. You'll see all the costs that they include, which is significant. Yeah. All right, let's move on. What's mm -hmm. the next thing? Um, I think we've talked pretty well about option mm -hmm. D and the satellite facilities. Uh, again, option D. Just to recap what was kind of said in summary about each one, here's your current facility where you meet the state vet requirements barely, mostly. You can choose the appropriate word. That's what we're trying to indicate is that you're mostly barely passing whereas in option a you would completely meet the state requirements you're mostly meeting the facility shortfalls from the audit and you're mostly meeting the national standards from the animal shelter veterinarians you see in option b you do a little bit better where you start meeting the national standards but you're still since we're reusing the existing facility kind of not able to fully meet the facility shortfalls in the audit and then option c and d fully comply with all three of those um, okay suggested things and then okay. on to cost on the cost. On the cost. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. Yes, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Dave Sinclair, Budget Director. 
Uh, this slide summarizes the capital cost of each option against the $1 million currently appropriated by the board to the animal shelter project. Um, the big takeaway from this slide, I just want to draw your attention to this bottom row. Um, this is the amount for each option that the county would need to debt finance in order to uh, fund these estimates. Um, as directed by the board, county staff has maintained in the adopted five-year plan sufficient debt service capacity in order to finance $12.7 million. Okay. So what is the impact on the county's adopted five-year plan? Next slide, please. Um, this slide compares the total financial impact of each option against what we have programmed in the adopted five-year plan. The adopted five-year plan amounts for debt service and operating costs are on top here for a total of $6.23 million. Okay, that's the cumulative cost of all five years. Mm -hmm. Now I wanna be very careful here so that I don't mislead the public. Um, the big assumption for all the options as well as what we have programmed in the adopted five-year plan is that debt service and operating costs would begin to hit the five-year plan in fiscal year 20. And this is where I need to clarify things. This does not mean that staff is recommending that you delay the animal shelter project until FY20. I don't want the public to be misled by that at all. <laughs> what, we, what would happen was um, if a, a decision is made on the option, we would begin the final design in FY18. That would take us through the remainder of the current fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Construction would begin in FY19. Also in FY19, the county would issue the debt to finance construction and debt service and operate facility operating costs would begin to hit in fiscal year 20. Okay. Um, the big takeaway on this slide is the bottom row here. This shows the five-year plan savings, or in the case of option D, the additional five-year plan cost associated with each option. So option A, B, and C is affordable within what we currently have programmed in the adopted five-year plan. Mm -hmm. Just a couple things I'd like the board to be aware of. In option B, we would save cumulatively over fiscal year 20, 21, and 22 approximately $900,000. But as noted earlier, in about uh, five to 10 years, we would need to renovate the existing facility, the exterior building envelope, uh, sewer lines, things of that nature. Right now today, and this is just a, a rough estimate, but that could cost as much as half a million to a million dollars. Again, not necessarily an immediate need, but five, 10 years down the road. In the case of option C, you will notice that the debt service cost is higher than what we have programmed in the adopted five-year plan, and that is because of the capital cost exceeding $12.7 million. However, we do realize some operating savings because of the new construction component relative to what is programmed in the five-year plan. So in totality, it is basically a, a push. There's, there's mo very minor savings uh, spread across the three years in fiscal year 20 through 22. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yeah, Mr. Noe? That very last paragraph is incredibly uh, telling and persuasive from my perspective. Um, because, I mean, obviously, I think we all have concerns about, you know, we, we don't, there's a limited amount of resources available for anything we want to do. Um, and I'm I was concerned when I saw the, the bottom, and going back, you know, we get to see these slides a few days in advance, but we don't get to talk about them until today. The bottom line on the construction costs was, I think, for option C, well, for, for many of these, really, was higher than we thought it might be. But the notion that we have an option that may cost a little more on the construction side, but saves us significantly on the operation side and makes it affordable within our current assumptions, to me, I mean, I think that's very good news. I, mean, I look at option C as 
of these, you know, we could, we could, you could change any of these in a hundred different ways. I couldn't. Some, an engineer could change these in a hundred different ways, I'm sure. Option C is the option that I think is most consistent with what we've been hearing from citizens in a very loud way for the last three or four years. And very, frankly, I've been on this board 14 years, and like I said, animal shelters in my district. I've been hearing about this issue for the full 14 years I've been on this board, about the need for a better shelter situation. Option C, I think, is what the public has been asking for, is what they're expecting. Um, and the fact that there's an operational cost savings, we can actually make it bigger and operate it for less money than we originally expected, to me, speaks very well for our ability to give the public what they're looking for on this. Mm -hmm. I agree, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. I agree with what Mr. Noway is saying. We get a brand new facility, whereas in A and B, we still have part of the older facility. And, um, the first two in 20 years, you would be doing your maintenance and fixing a lot of things, and and the RFP might even come in lower. We don't know that, so we keep our fingers crossed. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. Um, I like option C too, but I don't think we need. I think we could bring it down a little. I don't think we need as many kennels. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Lawson. Uh, value engineering is something I um, recently worked through with uh, Fire Station 5 in the Brentsville District. With, um, and um, I, I learned that through some value engineering, they can uh, go back to the drawing board. The engineers, architects mm -hmm. can go back to the drawing board, um, sharpen their pencil, uh, take out some bells and whistles. So. Um, and that, that hasn't, we haven't come close to that, correct, Mr. Martina? <laughs> That's correct. That would be after we've received bids when that uh, went undertaken. And uh, Tom Brune can speak more specifically to the whole bid process and the value engineering that goes on. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Callan. <laughs> I concur that of the four options that we're seeing, it's, it looks like option C is, is, is the best option. Um, but I, I do want to just underscore again how outrageous I think this process is. How we have gone from the, the putting a million dollars aside for, uh, because we thought it was going to be 10% of the design costs, um, and we'll, let's budget $12.7 million into our budget. But we won't need that. Uh, come on, uh, that's on the high end of where, where we are. To the point now where we use this, uh, what I think, it, we need to make sure that we attach the, in every presentation, slide 19 with slide 20, because slide 20 looks extremely deceptive. Oh, it's only a million and a half dollars for option A. We, we already have option, or the, the, the money to, uh, uh, put aside. Well, we have the money put aside because we raised people's taxes. We have money put aside because we took money from them and put it into the, the, the county coffers. And, and to, to, to say somehow we save money, um, I, I think is, is the height of what frustrates me about this whole process. I hope at some point we can look at some value engineering to figure out, again, what are the state requirements? Because I believe we need to meet the, the requirements outlined. And, and if the requirements say that we need to build uh, a $15 million shelter, well then I understand that, that that's where we need to be. But I, I would guess that some are requirements, some are guidelines, some are likes to have. Um, and, uh, and so I, I know we're not voting on anything tonight, but I, I wanted to put my, my concerns uh, out there in, in, in the process. Okay, what, what are the next steps, Mr. Martino? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, um, this is a presentation only to uh, give you this information. And uh, what I would propose is that over the next month that uh, staff visit with each of you and go into much more detail about some of the questions that you've raised today. But this was exactly what uh, you asked for so that we could get a very clear understanding of exactly what this project would take. And, and so we're at that point. We would come back to the board in September if that's September 5th or, or, or 19th, 
because at some point, I think the board would need to create the project and budget appropriate to move forward. And the intent here also with regard to um, the, the numbers was... And we would do all that in September, right? We would do that in September. Uh, and do you have a meeting in mind? Well, I would target the 5th, sir. September if, the if 5th? Says, That's our first meeting, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yeah, Ms. Lawson? For the same reasons as, um, as deferring the, uh, the okay. precinct changes, I would, I would ask that you look at the 19th because this, this has garnered so much countywide attention with the board in recess September 5th. I, I personally don't think is, is a good day for us to take this up when folks have been on vacation. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I would like the extra time to uh, have community input. Okay. Um, I, I, I think I, I'm okay with that, but the one thing is that, I, and look, the whole board is going to, each of us is going to have our own, we're going to have our own concerns with this or that or the other thing, but we do need to move on. I think one of the citizens who um, mentioned this, Miss Johnson, Johnson uh, mentioned that, you know, we built that shelter, what, 1970, the board really needs to take action. We can't continue to study this action, this, what we're going to do, we've got to, we've got to, we've got to take an action sometime. And if that's September 19th, I'm fine with that. Um, but. Uh, do we have anything else on the 19th that would be a problem if this is oh well, at this point it's quite early i would say okay mr it's campbell it's first come first serve yeah. okay <laughs> um can we uh, set that date this afternoon um should we get the board just yeah we'll, we'll plan for the 19th okay let's plan the 19th and i know there's a lot of citizens out there who are very in interested in this issue so uh, tentatively, and it sounds like it's going to happen unless we get a snowstorm or something like, well, not in September, but <laughs> hurricane or something. Uh, but uh, September the 19th will be the date where the board, probably the evening session so that as many citizens as possible can participate. Evening session of September the 19th, the meeting starts at 7.30 p.m. on the 19th, the evening session. Okay, anything further? Okay, thanks a lot, everybody. I appreciate all your citizen input. Uh, and we, we need to hear more. You've, he you've, you've heard the presentation. We really do want to get your input on this. So, thank you. Thank you.